Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining this panel. Um, my name is Sandra Bernal Heredia, and I'm a assistant professor at the Department of Spanish at Colby College. Uh, my research is actually in Latin American studies and um, cultural studies, uh, specifically indigenous representations in popular culture. And I'm also a professor in, uh, I teach, um, I am recently teaching um, classes for Spanish for heritage speakers. It's been three years. Uh, I taught it previously, uh, my previous university at the University of Texas in Austin. And um, so this is how I came to um, join my research on comics and with the heritage speakers classes. Um, so let's begin. Um, okay. Uh, so in fall of 2020, we initiated the Hispanic Heritage Track in the Spanish Department at Colby College in Waterville, Maine. Colby is a small private college in the Northeast uh, with approximately 1,800 students. Throughout the years, Colby has increased um, its recruitment of diverse students through organizations that connect low-income students with leading colleges and opportunities. For instance, the Posse Group or the Quest Bridge as well. Due to these changes, the campus had an influx of students coming from Houston, El Paso, Palo Alto, etc., and a great number of them were uh, Spanish heritage speakers. A heritage speaker, according to Professor Guadalupe Valdez at Stanford University, quote, is an individual who was raised in a home where a non-English language is spoken, who speaks or only understands the heritage language, and who is to some degree bilingual in English and the heritage language, end quote. A Hispanic heritage speaker typically acquires Spanish at home, and the language is usually maintained within the privacy and intimacy of the household and limited to conversations with family members. These circumstances give the heritage speaker all oral conversational abilities, but most of them lack the grammar, vocabulary, and other the skills appropriate for situations other than family and informal settings. English and Spanish cohabitate in the space of a His Hispanic heritage speaker within the home and also within themselves. However, they usually coexist in opposition. English being the portal to public interactions, mainly because schooling is primarily and exclusively in English, while Spanish stays relegated to the privacy of the home, sometimes even referred to as kitchen Spanish. According to Professor Sanchez Munoz at California State University, Spanish heritage speakers come to the classroom with, quote, very low linguistic self-esteem. They have internalized deficit discourses about their Spanish, their English, or both, end quote. Addressing the linguistic deficit in, is a non, it's, it's not an easy task, right? As heritage language learners are not an homogeneous group, students have diverse cultures, different cultural dialects, and varying levels of language proficiency. We also needed to um, we also needed to understand language as an intrinsic component um, to their cultural and ethnic identity. Therefore, a goal when creating assignments for the heritage class was to motivate students to continue using their heritage tone, which also included non-standard varieties of Spanish. In conclusion, the heritage language curriculum uh, should aim, as Sanchez Munoz stated, quote, re to repair the damage to ethno-linguistic identity and linguistic insecurities that the speakers might have suffered throughout their educational or social experience, end quote. Uh, to start repairing the anxiety, insecurity, and trauma that might be connected to the students uh, learning, maintaining, or speaking of the heritage language, we needed to address the topic of immigration, which is how the students become bilingual and bicultural. Through my research of, on Peruvian indigenous comics, I found that comics were opening spaces for alternative narratives 
uh, by incorporating indigenous voices and stories into the popular dominant culture. Therefore, my first objective to use comics in the classroom was to bring out these immigration experience and represent them not only the factual circumstances, but also the psychological consequences that come with migration. Heritage speakers have dealt with these experiences inadvertently. Probably they hear it in family gatherings or sometimes in like private settings. Um, however, they, they listen to these stories throughout their lives. Uh, to introduce the topic of migration, Atravesando Fronteras, Crossing Borders in the class, students read two comics, Rosita Sasusta by Mexican-American uh, teacher and illustrator Victoria Alvarez and El, Paso, El Peso Hero by Dallas-based writer and school teacher Hector Rodriguez Tur. Rosita Gets Scared, is a 14 page comic that addresses children's fear of deportation in immigration communities. As seen through the lens of a 12 year old girl who is learning to cope with physical and emotional effects of trauma. This comic book features, uh, focuses uh, on the fear of deportation as a teaching tool for social and emotional learning. The 24 page comic, El Peso Hero, Border Stories, follows the story of Mexican American superhero Ignacio Rivera. Rivera is a rogue hero who helps immigrants on the US border, US Mexico border, and stands up against Mexico's cartels, corrupt officials, and human traffickers. After completing the readings at home, uh, we had a discussion, a reflection discussion in the class. And uh, in this discussion, also the students came up with possible questions for their family member interviews that they were gonna do. The readings helped immensely to make uh, the students aware of the sensitivity of the topics. These interviews were done at home and by phone or FaceTime, and the students took notes and came up with 10 moments of the story uh, that they asked their family members about how they came to the US, uh, it could also be their own experience, but I encourage them to actually interview a family member or a relative. Um, and, so, and then they came up with 10 moments in their whole story that they wanted to emphasize. The information gathered in these interviews were portrayed in the comics created through the platform Pixton. And throughout this presentation, you will see uh, example of these creations. According to Dominic Davis and in his book, Documenting Trauma in Comics, trauma is, quote, slippery, elusive, spectral, and for many, unrepresentable, end quote. Trauma is a response to deeply distressing or disturbing events that can lead to emotional, psychological, or even physical consequences for the individual. Unlike physical injuries that are visible and obvious, this uh, psychological effects of traumatic experience vary from person to person and can affect the connection and meaning experience by the subject. According to the leading expert on trauma, Peter Levine, quote, we become traumatized when our ability to respond to a perceived threat is in some way overwhelmed, end quote. Therefore, it is the individual's inability to cope with, perceive, grasp, or even understand a moment in their past that becomes elusive to their memory. A traumatic experience ev evades the memory of the individual, creating a disruption of time and history, affecting the normal path to perceive, understand, or store a memory. When immigration happens, there is a loss of identity, a transition to a new environment, a disconnect with systems and regulations and a level of violence and abuse that might occur depending on the circumstances of each case. In these circumstances, the insecurities, abuses, laws, and voids that migration entails are carried through generations, creating intergenerational trauma. Second and third generation immigrants, our heritage speakers, have been raised within these experiences and stories and that might, and that might have remained silence or taboo, or if speaking about them would awaken traumatic memories from the past. 
However, the trauma of migration lingers and inadvertently affects the new generations. Sarah McNichol, in her article, Exploring Trauma and Social Hauntings uh, Through comic, Community Comics Creation, called these lingering traumas social hauntings. Quote, repress or unsolved traumas from harm inflicted or the loss sustained by a social violence done in the past or in the present that make themselves known to us, end quote. These social hauntings might not have a visible present, but they are felt nonetheless. In the case of heritage learners, the traumatic experience affects their relations to the heritage language or to the heritage culture. According to Hilary Chu uh, in her article, Comics Form and Narrating Life, the text image component of comics can accommodate the interaction between the seeable and the sayable of the traumatic experience. The gutters um, serve as a buffer zone for the reader and the creator to frame the voids in the stories. Memories that might be too intense to be repressed verbally or visually can find a space in the gutters. As mentioned above, the memory of the traumatic experience is fragmented. The comic structure can bring these un unconnected moments that might not share the same time and space side by side. According to Chute, her book, in her book, Disaster Drone, these traumatic memories can be expressed in panels. Quote, they just oppose time and space, convey the simultaneity of the experience, the different competing registers, so often a feature of traumatic experience, such as the concomitant presence and absence of memory, conscientiousness, agency, and effect. End quote. The comi allows for the present and for the past and present to coexist in the same page next to each other, accommodating the disruption of the temporalities, temporalities and chronologies of these traumatic memories. According to McNichol, the special representation of the unresolved past can help us make sense of the more visible present, yet fragmented present. In the case of heritage learners, the trauma of their immigration experience is an everyday reminder of their relation to their heritage, culture, and language. The students, after conducting the interviews for the, for the assignments, they transform these memories into words and images to tell a historical truth. The student takes the role of, the, of a historian synthesizing the past knowledge expressed to them orally and representing it in the comics. The students are encouraged to combine the information gathered in the interviews with their own memories um, of having heard the stories throughout their lives. Um, this is a survey that I also ask the students to complete while uh, after they created their comics. Um, um, I urge the students to recall these encounters in the past experience when they have heard these stories of migration stories passing by um, and the feelings and emotions they experience that, and to convey those in the comics as a way for them to internalize these moments and have some agency through them as well, have some agency and give them the opportunities to grasp and understand their relationship to these traumatic memories and start a healing process. When creating the comics in the platform Pixton, I did not have to worry about students' insecurities of their drawing skills or feeling limited to express themselves. The platform uh, was limited in another way, I would say, for instance, it lacked uh, the ability to represent a specific cultural objects and spaces for heritage speakers. Um, in a way, I found this enriching as well, as it demanded the students to make creative editorial choices. The students uh, had to envision the locations, the physical and aesthetic characteristics of the characters, rephrase the dialogue to convey meaning in short text bubbles, determine the relevance of the moments represented, 
and consider the emotional impact of their visual choices, such as the lightness and darkness of the panels. This type of assignment um, gives the students room as well to play with the language, especially in a heterogeneous class, this assignment accommodates varying levels of lang language proficiency and permits the insertion of students' diverse cultures and the recognition of cultural dialects. And I, I've shown you a little bit of the, the, cre the creativity that the students um, show with the use of the language. As mentioned at the beginning of this talk, since this was a new class, uh, we needed to find ways to promote it to incoming students and educate faculty, staff, and advisors about what a heritage speaker is and the importance of these classes. In this sense, the comics uh, have been an impactful and colorful way to advertise and educate. Um, with the students' permission, I made their comics public through an exhibition for Hispanic Heritage Month. And also a story that was printed in the college news newsletter. And, um, and that's, that's another one of my students that also um, we, we published his, uh, his comic strip. And um, he's actually, he sent that picture to his family for, for to show. Uh, in May of this year, I requested a grant to combine the students' comic strips into a 18 pages comic, um, comic book, which is the one that I have here, called Historias de Resiliencia y Esperanza. Um, and copies of these comics have been distributed on campus and donated to the community. And the main objective for this was to actually, uh, the Kobe community in general, the college campus, to get to know about the stories of these uh, diverse populations, these diverse students, that they are a minority in, in the, on campus. Uh, the comics are used uh, in other classes. I tried to uh, share them with as many of my colleagues as I could, uh, including in the language classes, due to the comics casual speech and image to text format, uh, L2 students can engage with the language on a dynamic level. Also in content classes, my colleagues have been using them to discuss the different situations and motivations to migrate to the US. And we also created an online English version of this comic book uh, to reach out other departments as well. Uh, to conclude, the main objective of this assignment was for students to make their immigration stories experience and experiences visible and tangible, getting them out of the shadows of the public of the private spheres, sphere to acknowledgement and visibility in the public eye. This assignment and the publication of the of the comics aimed to create empathy and inclusion, as we need to know our stories to understand, accept, and respect the diversity in our communities. Uh, I wanted to conclude by reading the, um, a quote of one of my students. Um, let's see. I wanted to conclude by reading a quote of one of my students uh, to show, of two of my students, to show how, in my opinion, the objective of this assignment was achieved. Um, so the question is, did developing a visual representation of the characters, the scenarios, and ideas made you internalize and reflect about your immigration experience or the ones of your reality more deeply how? So one student said, it honestly did. I usually don't focus so much on the things they had to go through, like the desert or Rio or crossing the, the river, I, I think they mean. Uh, it was more like, yeah, they crossed the Rio like everybody else did. By creating a visual representation really allowed me to see the reality, uh, what they had to go through. Another student said, it did make me think about the experiences more deeply and realistically. I felt a lot of empathy for my family and what they went through. So, um, well, 
thank you very much. Uh, I think that's it for my talk. <laughs> I don't know if there is any questions or if I can see them. Sandra, yes, thank you so much. Um, hi, I'm Nicole. For anyone who's watching, I'm, I'm a volunteer um, for today's events. And I um, I see the questions in the chat. So if you're okay with it, Sandra, I can um, I can read that out loud for you to answer um, live if you'd like. So we have a comment from Tracy, the event organizer, who um, just has a comment saying, this is fantastic, Sandra, what an important project. So yes, I, I, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for oh, sharing the information. You. I appreciate that. it. <laughs> and um, we have an anonymous question as well. It is, did you have any students who were hesitant about this project? How did you help them get more comfortable about sharing their family's experience? And I will mute myself really so you can address question. that question. Okay, yes, that's a really good question. And actually, so when we started the project, um, I told them that I was going to be the only one that was going to see it. So it was up to them. Um, I told them that it was going to be a reflection. Um, and if they were willing to share it, then I would print it. But I had to get consent um, from them. So that opened it up because uh, I also feel that when I told them, oh, you're gonna create a comic, they're like, no, I can't, I cannot draw, I cannot do anything. So then I was like, no, 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 no. There is this program, this is platform. You don't even have to know, you just have to actually think about. And I think that helps them a lot because some of the avatars is crazy how they look alike, like my students. And because they took the time and also I think that it went the same way with their stories of the, of the relative or the, in just in general, they tried to really recreate um, these stories. So after, when, when I actually told them that it was gonna be just private, but then they will have the choice to share it. A lot of them did. For my research, eventually, I had to ask permission and I went through the IRB process um, to actually get um, consent for them to share it in the public sphere. But for some of them, even I have a student, um, so I think, yeah, you can see, I think it's, it's I showed it. Um, she decided to actually do not state her name just because she was talking about drugs and her brother being um uh, was uh, sent back to his country so I, she decided not to but she still wanted to be part of the of the publication of the comic book so um i kind of gave them different options as well anonymity or if they want a credit and as as, as you can see the the picture with the student that took his own picture they wanted to be recognized and a lot of them um I think there is another one so this student actually posted the the picture included a picture of her mom in and then send it to her mom and like she sent the comic book as well to her and it just it created a lot of pride which is what I wanted right so this this um story is to be visible and not to be in the shadows that which are usually cause of taboo or why would I be telling what actually happened and this um this trauma this silence goes on this um uh what do you say like just yeah fear of, of telling these stories because they're not appreciated in, in in a way I can't hear you I can't hear you I think you're mute I'm so sorry, thank you. If you're ready for the next question. Sure. Okay, a uh, question from Catherine. How might you extend this work to help students share their stories with a broader community to support empathy and inclusion beyond the class? Right, so what I've been doing is through, I mean, it, it took some um, support from the departments. As I said, I applied for a grant. So we were able to publish the, we publish posters and we had them um, shown at three different locations at, at the university. And next year, I'll probably aim a little um, higher and maybe posted uh, those posters at 
downtown. We is the 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 city that I live in is very very small, so uh, we, we definitely will we'll be able to find a space to kind of have an exhibition of the posters. Um, also, just by the publication of of these comic books and that we are donating, and if anybody um, wants copies, as I said at the end, I think I have information about that. Um, just email me and request it. Is um, I mean, they're free, it's just the shipping um, cost. But yeah, through them, I've been sharing them and donating them to other like high schools and middle schools around the area. And they are using it in their classroom, especially for Hispanic Heritage Month. So, because some of them, they even talk about Maine, which there's not that many Hispanics in, in well, close to, to the location, right? So there's not a big uh, Hispanic community, at least where, in Waterville, the city that I am. Mm -hmm. Your mute. Got it, thank you. <laughs> Next question is from David. This is great work. Have you shared your work with children of other refugee communities and survivors of forced migrations, for example, Syria, Afghanistan, Africa? And if so, have you heard back about the response? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I know that there is, when I was doing my research about this, uh, I know that I found in different, for different um, immigration experiences, um, books that they've done. So I don't know, this, this book is in Spanish. So I don't, I don't know how else, how it could be shared somehow. But I know that there's other books that they, and that's how I was, I was actually trying to find when I was looking for the readings for my students. Uh, I found those two that were in Spanish, but then I found a lot of them that were about other communities, which I found amazing. But no, unfortunately, I have not shared them. No, with... Remembering to unmute this time. Thank, thank you. Um, the next question is anonymously submitted. And the question is, what surprised you the most about what the students' creative and decision-making as they created their stories? Yeah. So when I did it, that's a really good question. Um, when when I created this assignment, I was not envisioning publish publications or nothing. I was it was gonna be. I was not even uh, through Pixton. I was not even gonna download it. <laughs> we were going to just look at them through the platform. But after reading them, there are things that have been. Like I realized that all these uh, memories were just like closed inside and they were not shared. So it was so shocking uh, when I read them. And, um, and also this university is a private school. And I mean, there is a lot. So the disparity that exists between the students was also that was very surprising for me. And those things are not known. Um, uh, so for instance, I think it's this one. So these students say, I interview my dad over Facebook one day and use information from previous conversations. I think this really helped my dad tell a story that he never had the ability to talk about. Um, see his raw reaction and the sacrifices that he went through made me appreciate him so much more. So it was those kind of comments. And if you read some of the stories, they were so shocking and so diverse too. I mean, the circumstances that migration put us through, um, definitely they vary. So I, I wanted to value all of them. The, the family that came with a visa that they met um, studying, uh, while the, the other students, that their parents crossed the border, that went with the coyotes, that like so many, there's so many stories that, and we were, well, I did it for, we have two, four, six, seven, we have 12 stories and they are so different, each of them. Thank you. And we have one more question so far that I can see. 
It is, how did you go about printing and displaying the students' comics? Did you get additional funding for this project? Right, so I, as I said, this is a private university. So there is some grants that you can apply for. I think, luckily, I have that possibility, but I know that it's not easy. However, um, through Pixton, when you can download on the PDF, you can make them accessible that way. And, um, like an online version and you can just put them together, which I, I did that for the English version. But yes, I went about through the university. I applied to the Walker Fund, um, which is the Latin American Studies Walker Fund Foundation. And I got awarded like, I think it was like $3,000 that cover a thousand um, printing copies of these that I actually print them back in Peru because I have uh, connections with, from my research with comics. And so that was, it was cheaper than it would have been, I think, um, somewhere else. So, but yeah, we got them printed and the posters were, um, they were printed in the US, I think 500 or something, $600 that I went through. It was through the Walker Fund. All right, thank you. That is the last of the questions that I see in the Q&A, but um, a chat? Is, is, that, are, is that the same or I that is chat. different? Oh, okay. that appears to be different from the chat. I am checking the chat as well. Okay. And right now I'm not seeing any additional questions, but if you'd like, we can hold on for a minute and see if anything else comes up and give people a chance to type any additional questions in. Yeah, um, and in, in the meantime, if you don't mind me um, asking a question myself, I'm curious as to, uh, you talked about the students' feedback and responses um, to their work on the project. Could you tell us a little bit about what kind of feedback you received from your administration? Well, they're definitely, um, they're definitely very happy with, um, they didn't expect that, uh, uh, project in the classroom will become like the main event at the Hispanic Heritage Month. And um, I mean, there's there was a lot of effort put into, into, into making all these posters and, um, but yeah, they are definitely very happy because there is a presence that where the student is taking the picture, that's the main cafeteria. So everybody passes through there and you could see people standing, taking pictures, even though they are like, um, they might not understand um, the, because they, those ones are in Spanish. I didn't print the, the English version because I want them to just, even if they don't understand the language, they could like see the pictures and try to follow. And you could see a lot of them using um, their phones to translate just so they know about the stories. So it definitely created an interest. Um, I also sent some copies to the provost and like to, to kind of like all the departments so they can um, learn about the, the stories of these students. And yeah, they were like, they were like, the students were like, oh, we're signing autographs on our comics. So it, it did create some like um, momentum, I will say right now. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. The only additional um, piece I have in the question and answer um, window is uh, somebody commented no questions, but this was fantastic. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, and th yeah, thank you from me as well. Is there anything that you would like to um, to say? In well, I would just want to say, up? like, uh, in the with the objective to keep sharing these stories, uh, please email me if you're interested, if you want like the physical copies, as I said, um, we have some to share. Um, also, if you wanna use them for your classrooms with, I mean, I have the English version, but it's not as um, edited, I will say. Um, it's just that, that one, as I said, is just from Pixton, but they're, they, the dialogues oral in English. And then we also have the, the version in Spanish that that one is edited. And so, I mean, I can share them if you would like to use them. I think they're a great source to actually start conversation, to pick up the information and then to open the floor for other students to actually tell their stories. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.